Hollywood notoriously exaggerates for effects, but not always. You know how a lot of movies and TV shows set in New York City look the same? It's dark and gritty and there's always steam seeping up through manhole covers and filling the streets? Every time you notice that steam, you're getting a glimpse into Manhattan's unique process of generating power. Well, a replication of it. And sure, those thick clouds of steam are exaggerated for atmosphere, but filmmakers use that atmosphere to evoke New York for a reason. New York City has the largest steam system in the world. It's bigger than the next nine largest steam systems combined. And that's surprising, right? Times Square, the skyline, lit up at night. They make you think of electricity, not steam power. Most of New York does run on electricity. In most places, maintaining miles of steam pipes isn't economical. But in densely populated and interconnected urban areas, like the borough of Manhattan below 96th Street, generating power in a central facility and distributing it out through underground pipes has significant advantages. You'd think, though, that the world's largest steam system would be more noticeable than some steam rising from the ground, usually during that suspenseful scene when the main character goes out at night and you know the villain's going to show up, and it is. This is the part you don't see in movies. I'm on Manhattan's Upper East Side, across from Con Edison's East 74th Street Steam Generating Plant. It's one of the seven steam plants Con Edison operates in Manhattan, and just inside there, water, clean, drinkable water from New York City's drinking water supply is being turned into pressurized high-energy steam. This was originally a coal-burning plant that supplied electricity to the subway, and I guess it goes without saying that burning coal for any reason isn't a great idea, so today these plants run on natural gas instead. But why the switch from electricity to steam? Well, a lot of reasons. First, the process. It's clean and efficient. In facilities like these, water is funneled into boilers that burn natural gas, raising the temperature so the water rapidly turns to steam. Then that steam needs to travel, first through big, high-pressure main pipes and then through smaller, low-density pipes until it reaches its destination. And that destination can be any number of places, because you can use steam for a lot more than power. It's a part of everyday life. Say you visit Manhattan and stay in a hotel service by steam. Small pipes branching from that underground network lead it right to your room if it's too cold, or a centralized air conditioning unit if it's too hot. If you dine out in a restaurant, your dishes and utensils are likely cleaned with high-powered steam. Museums use it to keep artwork on display at the right humidity level, and many of the city's hospitals use it for sterilizing instruments and keeping things clean. And the steam system powers many of Manhattan's most popular well-known destinations. But quick aside, not all of New York runs on steam. You still need electricity, and you can make steam and electricity at the same time. It's not one or the other. Some of Con Edison's facilities are set up for cogeneration. High-pressure steam travels from the boilers through pipes into a turbine generator and spins the turbine to generate electricity. No fossil fuel, no wastewater runoff, and the remaining steam is reused. It's directed back into the steam system. So, okay, that's why there's so much steam in Manhattan, but most of it stays in pipes. Why does it rise from the ground, and why do so many directors decide that steam equals New York? There are two reasons um, for why it rises from the ground, at least. First, if steam from underground pipes reaches the street, it's because of ongoing repairs or an occasional leak. In most cases, Con Edison covers the ground with a steam stack, a large orange and white funnel that sends steam offward so it doesn't burn people or disrupt traffic. That's what those big white clouds of steam are from. It's also what those orange and white cylinders that pop up all over the city are, if you've ever wondered. The other way steam gets to the ground is when it rises through manhole covers, which is very cinematic for some reason. But that steam isn't part of the steam system. It's vapor from cooler water making contact with the hot underground steam system pipes. It's usually rainwater or condensation, not the water from the steam system that powers so much of New York. And yet that image of steam rising from a manhole cover is emblematic of the city on screen. It's impossible to definitively say why steam-filled streets represent New York in so much media. Maybe it's the influence of film noir, where white steam against dark streets helped create the high contrast look that defines the style. Maybe it's just an overused trope. But even if it's cliche, it's not inaccurate. Steam does rise from the streets in New York. It's part of the center experience of living here. So whenever you watch a scene set in New York City and notice steam rising from the ground, you're taking in a core part of this city, whether it's aesthetic or quite literally what allows it to run. The best part? The director or whoever decided steam should be rising from the ground in that scene likely has no idea why it actually does that or just how vital steam is New York's functioning. And from now on, you do. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who subscribed. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. If you haven't yet and you enjoyed this, please do. And I will see you here with a video next week.